dear diary, it's been a terrific start to life at the Emirates, despite the fact we couldn't offload either of our left backs on deadline day with their contracts expiring at the end of the season. We bagged up those wins in our first two games with two more convincing ones over Leicester, 5-1 at home with doubles from Gabriel Jesus and Martinelli, before a slightly rotated team got the job done at Watford 4-0. That has us joint top of the league with Aston Villa as the fixtures are about to pile up. That's because it's time for the Champions League and we have a tough start against German giants Bayern Munich. At least it's at home and to be fair, there are a few players of theirs I would like a look at as some potential transfer targets. In particular, Cassie, Balde and Alfred. Then we are back in the Prem hosting a Brighton team who are also in Europe this season, albeit the Europa League. Hopefully, our perfect start continues. Until next time. Everyone and welcome to episode 81 of FMOE here with Arsenal on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up today we start off our journey in this season's Champions League. The last two winners of this competition facing each other on the opening match day as we host Bayern Munich and then off the back of that we are going to take on Brighton who were quite plucky in the Premier League last season in that competition and hopefully keep ourselves on top of the table. So if you are looking forward to that in today's episode then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated but we've played a few games as well as skipped over transfer deadline day which was a little bit unexpected since we played our first two games of the season in yesterday's episode. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it. Over in the top right corner, we actually played Leicester before transfer deadline day, but both games that we have played, we picked up very convincing wins. Thankfully, we were able to rest a few players in that Watford game off the back of an international break, which alongside the start of the Champions League was one of the main reasons that we did try to do that. But we also had deadline day, and things didn't quite go to plan. Before deadline day, we did get Gabriel Jesus to sign a new contract. It is just a one-year contract but it is going to start come the end of this season. So he will be hanging around for one more year here at Arsenal. But both our left backs, Kieran Tierney and Alexander Zinchenko, their contracts are expiring. They do not want to sign new ones. And unfortunately, the bids that we had come in for them were too low. And to be fair to Kieran Tierney, the bid for him did come in from Chelsea. And that just felt cruel trying to send someone there when they are so awful. In this save universe, those players are going to hang around for the remainder of the season, or at least until January, and hopefully by then, maybe, we can actually find a replacement who is a little bit cheap for them, because at the moment, with our scouting taking a little while to get set up, as it usually does when you do join a new club, we weren't really able to find suitable replacements for the money that was being offered for those two inside the last years of their contracts, so absolutely no squad changes since yesterday's episode, albeit there are a few players not registered for the Champions League, the likes of Bala Kopchap, Jan Pulik, and Florenzano, in particular Bala Kopchap, is kicking up a real stink, and it does mean that our managerial support has gone down quite a bit off the back of our start, despite the fact that we are picking up quite good results on the field, but hopefully that does continue, despite those dynamics taking a little bit of a turn, albeit our toughest test so far, arguably, in this entire save coming up as we take on the Champions League holders in Bayern Munich. Of course, in the save universe, I don't have the Bundesliga turned on as a playable league because we are not going to go there, but they are the defending champions in the Champions League and also have some really good players, as you saw through that intro, all interested in coming to the club and in areas that we could look to improve as well, Alfred a very good young and upcoming attacking midfielder and also Cassie and Bolde, good right back and left back. So that could be an area we do look to improve with some quite old players in those wing back slots for us and also only with three star current ability and potential. So maybe that's an area we are going to look to improve 
come the start of next season's transfer window, especially left back. Of course, with that situation with Sinchenko and with Tierney. And while we are on the subject of some players who we might look at signing in the future here at Arsenal, a very interesting one has popped up, and that would be this gentleman, Kylian Mbappe. Of course, his value probably means we're never going to be able to outright sign him, but if we go over and have a look at his contract details, he is in the final year of his current contract, to be fair though, is on a wage of £1 million a week, which might just be a little bit too expensive for us, but still, if we go over and have a look at the scout report for him, he is extremely interested in a transfer here. If we can find a way to pick him up on a free, I suggest it would be absolutely stupid not to, and maybe we could look to bring Kylian Mbappe to the club at some stage during the second half of the season. Hopefully, he does not renew his contract with Paris Saint-Germain before then. That could be a big bit of business, albeit with that wage. It might take a decent chunk out of our transfer budget for next season if we do look to do that. But in terms of the Champions League for this upcoming season, and going back in time a little bit for this one, but here are the odds from the Athletic for the Champions League this season. As you can see, we are the four favourites or joint third favourites alongside Bayern Munich. The two teams above us are Real Madrid and Liverpool with also Barcelona right in that hunt. Interesting to see that Manchester City, of course, these days managed by the former Arsenal manager, not on that list. So indeed, that was a very interesting move, but we are expected to be right in the fight for this competition as well as the Premier League this season, albeit, as I said, it is a tough start. And going over to have a look at our schedule, we potentially are going to be in a situation here where we do have to play catch up off the back of our first few games, especially this first one against Bayern. But second up, we take on Juventus, albeit that one also at home. But I'd argue those might be our two toughest games in the Champions League in this league phase this season. Off the back of that, a few easier ones against the likes of Apoel and Copenhagen. Then off the back of that, things get a bit tougher again, traveling to Real Sociedad and to Dortmund before two games in January. We should really be winning, but if we can get off to a good start in these first couple of games, that should make sure we end up in a very good position on the league table and going into this first game against Bayern Munich. As I said, the defending champions, we have no injury concerns. Unfortunately, it does look like we might not get a look at Cussie with a pull groin, but still a very good Bayern team, and we'll come back shortly and see if we can continue our winning start here at Arsenal in the Champions League against Bayern Munich. And of course we get the Champions League music, which I have forgotten about. It's been a little while since we did manage in Europe all the way back at Linfield, and this is also our first proper game in the Champions League as well. We are going full strength for this one, and hopefully can do a decent job against this Bayern Munich outfit. A few little changes here and there, of course, with that injury to Cussie, albeit he is still on the bench, but still good wingbacks there in the likes of Balde and Alfonso Davies. It is still a very strong team, the defending champions from the champions of two years ago, but hopefully at home we can pick up three points or at least one to start off this Champions League campaign. And just show of the 10 minute mark, we get our first highlight here. It is Bayern Munich with a core and Alfred puts this into the mixer, but thankfully Bamba heads that one away, albeit Alfred still on the attack and forces a decent save there. Out of Ramsdale, we are going balanced for this one, seeing as Bayern are one of the stronger teams we are going to take on this season. Now another corner, exactly the same spot, but thankfully we head that one away, albeit Alfonso Davies with a shot, but thankfully... That one does go over the bar, so still nil all, coming up to the 15 minute mark. And just past the half hour mark, we have gone a bit more positive because we are actually dominating position in this game, so we'll see if that works like it has in the Premier League so far. But we are going to make a change here, Kieran Tenney, with an orange injury. I think we're going to play things safe early on in the season, so Alexander Zinchenko will come on for him, but still nil all, just the one highlight with 15 minutes left in the first half. And that is half time in our first game of the Champions League this season. And unfortunately, not many highlights in this one. A few chances to Bayern Munich from a few corners around about the 10 minute mark. But apart from that, quite a quiet game, albeit it has been quite even in terms of stats. So maybe not as bad as those highlights did make it look. But also, two of our star players, our wingers, only on a 6.4. And I do feel like maybe we should take them off while they are underperforming. So Carvalho and Trincao will come on for both Saka 
and Martinelli at half time. But overall, not a great first half. But to be fair, a point from this opening game, even though it is at home, would not be a terrible result. But hopefully, we get a few more highlights in the second half. We'll get things back underway. Still nil all. And nearly up to the 69 minute mark. It's a nice time for another highlight in this game. It has taken a few while, and Bayern Munich here are on the attack. Saliba will head that one away, as unfortunately. I just roll on my scrolly there, but on my mouse a little bit too much. And now a giveaway. Alfred gets in behind. It is a poor pass there, I think, that did give the ball away. Missed it a little bit there while I was getting the camera angle back to how it should be with the zoom. But I think it was Bumba who has given the ball away. He did that in yesterday's episode against Newcastle, but thankfully did not cost us to be fair there. Coop Miners probably could have been a bit more alert, but it's a giveaway. You can't do that against a team like Bayern Munich, and that makes it 1-0 with just over 20 minutes left. And while we are here, we might make some substitutions. A few players down to Red Hearts. So we're going to bring on Bubaka Kamala for Palate in that deep-lying playmaker role, and also Vera for Erdegaard, and also try and go a bit wider as well and see if that helps in the latter stages off the back of going 1-0 down. And only five or so minutes off the back of that opening goal. It is a free kick here for Bayern. It's a bit of a tight angle, but Verts no doubt will try and put this into the top right corner. Ramsdale gets there, but somehow doesn't keep it out. I think that's quite poor for him. We'll wait for another angle, but that might be the dagger blow Bayern 2 0 up here. And that is going to be very tough to come back from against the defending champions. Ramsdale gets there. It's a really poor effort. 2 0 Bayern. With around about 10 minutes left, and while we are here being two goals down, I think it is time for us to put a few more players on an attacking duty, or a more positive one anyway, and we might also go to an attacking mentality to see if that can help us out, and maybe try and claw this one back to even Stevens. But we are running out of time, albeit now there's 81 minutes gone. There's another highlight by in here. I do have the ball around that halfway line, and it is Scalvini here who is on it, plays that one to Alfonso, tries to play that in behind. Good chance here for Velo, but this time Ramsdale does make a decent save, thankfully, and keeps it at 2-0. And now it is another corner here for Bayern, as Barcelona putting a bit of a thumping on Manchester City. Kamara will head that one out for another corner. Trebs on Spore beating Cardiff. Mikel's not doing a very good job there at Cardiff, because if we have a look at the league table soon, they are in a bad position, albeit now we have a free kick down the other end. And Trinkel bundles that over the line. So Sean's not worrying about Cardiff, because maybe we might have a chance here to grab a late equaliser. It is now 2-1. I think he was onside there, but we are waiting for a VAR check. And thankfully, the goal has been awarded. So maybe we can get another one back in this one and steal a point at home. It's a messy free kick, but Trinkel bundles that over the line. And that makes it 2-1 with five minutes left. And off the back of that goal, we are putting a lot more players now on an attacking duty just to see if we can somehow grab an equaliser in this game with only three minutes left. Now we've also told our players as well to be a bit more direct and be expressive as well. And now Trinkau finds himself in space here down this left-hand side. Squares that for Calvalio. That is a stone-cold penalty. Davies brings him down inside the box. And maybe these tactical tweaks are going to rescue a point from us in this opening game. This could be a big moment, as we should get awarded a penalty. Indeed we do. This could be a big come from behind point in this one. Coop Miners takes it quickly. What was that? That is horrible, that from Coop Miners. That's almost a sellable offence. That is a terrible idea against Bayern Munich trying to do a chip penalty down the middle. And now it's a highlight down the other end for Bayern. Hopefully they actually score from this, because otherwise I will be very annoyed from Coop Miners. Lavia puts that one over the top. And we had a chance there to grab a draw. But Coop Miners absolutely stuffed things up from the penalty spot. And the sweet left foot lookalike has cost us a point there against Bayern Munich. To be fair, we did get ourselves into a bit of trouble. But overall, the stats in that game we're quite even and we came back very strongly late and should have got a point out of that game. But Coop Miners, what were you thinking? But to be fair, in a league stage phase of the Champions League now, that's not a terrible result. It certainly doesn't mean 
we're in a spot of bother just yet. Hopefully we can get back on track against Juventus in our next game, which we're also going to probably have to show you guys on camera, being one of the bigger ones we are going to play this season. But that is not an ideal start. Had the chance there to rescue a point. But unfortunately, Coop Miners just bottles things and we end up losing 2-1 to Bayern. Also looks like some other English teams did not have a good start either. But we lose our first game here at Arsenal in the Champions League to Bayern Munich. And we'll just come back shortly and check on that injury to Kieran Tierney. And unfortunately, it is a little bit more serious than we first feared with it coming up as an orange injury. He is going to be out for eight days to two weeks. So might miss a little bit of football. So it does mean he will be unavailable for this upcoming Premier League clash as we do take on Brighton. But hopefully on recent form in that competition, we can bounce back and should be okay with Sinchenko in his place. And going forward a few days to the day of the game, there's actually been a few more injuries that have occurred in training to pull groins to two of our centre-backs there in Bamba and Kamara. It's a common injury at the moment here, but it does mean we are going to have to rotate our defence quite significantly for this game with three injuries to two of our starters anyway, and one of our bench options, and also a few players still quite tied off the back of that game against Bayern Munich, but hopefully this is a good chance for us here to get back on track and stay on top of the Premier League because Brighton so far have been a little bit shaky to start things off all the way down in 16th, a little bit surprising off the back of a good campaign last season, which did see them end up in the Europa League. They've picked up a win in that competition and against Tottenham to start the season in the Prem alongside that, but as well, they've lost games to Middlesbrough and Aston Villa and drawn with Brentford, so they do look like a team at home that we should be beating, very similar in terms of personnel to what they did look like last season. They've got a few interesting players there in the likes of Emile Smith-Rowe, who at one stage we were looking at signing to fill a homegrown club requirement, and also at the back, Gabriel, a former Arsenal centre-back who did get sold there a couple of seasons ago, definitely not some of my work there, but he has now played a few games for Brighton off the back of Arsenal making a little bit of a profit on him, but certainly a few players coming back to the Emirates for this one. But hopefully, despite some rotation, we can get back on track and we'll come back shortly with the action and hopefully pick up three more points as we take on Brighton. And here are the team sheets for this game. Back in the Premier League, as you can see, a few changes, especially in defence. Jakubu and Balakotchap in defence alongside Zinchenko at left back. And also Ugarte comes in for Coop Miners, who had it coming off the back of that penalty there as Brighton, as you saw before. A few ex-Arsenal players in this lineup, but off the back of the early season form, hopefully we can pick up three more points and get back on top of the Premier League. And a very early highlight in this one, it's a free kick to Brighton and McAllister there. Really test Ramsdale going for that right corner, much like Verts did in that previous game, to be fair. It wasn't all Coop Miner's fault because both the goals that we did concede were pretty much giveaways through that pass. It was, of course, from Bamba. And now Ramsdale, another mistake there with his hands looking a little bit shaky early on. But thankfully, our defense clears that one away. But Brighton, another chance here through a corner. And now Gerson puts this far post looking for Iron. Now Smith Rowe will try and tidy this up, plays that over to Iron. Now Gabriel, a few of the ex Arsenal players. Getting involved here and now Harsin Allen tries to play this one back to Guendo. We'll see if anything comes from this highlight because it's threatening to be one of those ones that doesn't amount to much. But it is still Brighton here on the attack. They have the ball edge of the box. Tomiyasu wins this. Now Erdegaard plays that one all the way across to Zinchenko. Picks out Martinelli who will try and do something down this left hand side all the way back to Yakubu. Now Pelé who was decent. In that Champions League opener has been decent so far since he has come to the club. Now Tomiyasu from a tight angle will pick out Jesus. Thankfully, something did come from that long old highlight. And we grab an early 1-0 lead. And hopefully we can kick on from this early doors back in the Premier League. It was a long old highlight, but off the back of getting the ball back from a few Brighton attacks. Tomiyasu, nice ball here in the mix of Sanchez in goal. Probably should be getting to that one before Jesus, but we don't mind off the back of some of that stuff that happened in that previous game. And we make it 1-0, a few minutes shy of the 10-minute mark. And now it's a free kick. And somehow Tomiyasu 
bundles that over line Sanchez having a shocker early in this one. The initial header, I believe that was from Yakubu, gets parried away right into the path of Tomoyasu. An early goal and an assist, and we go 2 0 up inside of 10 minutes. And just past the 20 minute mark, we get our next highlight in this one. The only bit of action that has happened since you were last here is Ugade has picked up a yellow card, but nice ball there for Tomoyasu. Squares that one for Saka, big chance, but puts it wide. But we are still 2 0 up. And nearly inside the last five minutes of this first half, and yet again, we are on the attack so far. It's been a pretty good watch off the back of that early scare where Ramsdale did drop the ball from a corner, but thankfully, a counter attacking goal off the back of that. Somehow, Martinelli does win that ball for us. Shot from a tight angle. That one does just go off target, probably. Would have been better squaring that one for a teammate, but not too long off the back of that. We are down the right end again with a from and Tomiyasu. Tries to pick out someone there inside the box, but Gabriel clears that one away. Ugate will tidy things up. Will probably look to take him off at half time on that yellow, but Tomiyasu again is on the attack. Looking quite dangerous today. Ugate inside the box. Oh, it's Mo Salah like that. He puts that one away inside the far post. 3 0 just before half time, and that should be three points yet again in the Premier League. And Tomiyasu having some game here, two assists and a goal now, albeit that was mostly some individual brilliance there from Ugate, our backup defensive midfielder behind Coop Miners, giving me something to think about off the back of what happened in that Bayern Munich game, and that should make it 3-0 going into half time, and that is a very good first half, as I said, off the back of an early scare from those early corners to Brighton, but since then, we have well and truly Got on the front foot largely thanks to Tomiyasu. We'll make one change here at half time with Ugate on that yellow card. We will take him off. And our options on the bench today, I think we'll give Sambi Lakonga the expensive signing, which we didn't make, some game time and see if he can do anything in the second half. But things going very well in this one so far. We'll get things back underway with that 3 0 lead. And about 10 minutes into the second half, it looks like yet again we might be on the attack. It could be a bad scoreline here for Brighton. And to be fair, most of the games we have played in the Premier League so far, that has been the case. Now, Gabriel there with a little bit of a hard challenge on a former teammate. And that looked a little bit harsh, but he gets a straight red card. So now we are playing against 10 men for the remainder of this one. And we are 3 0 up and off the back of that shortly. We do have a corner Martinelli. We'll try and put this far post. Maybe we go attacking off the back of that. Good chance there from a corner for Yakubu. That one comes off the base of the post. And we are still at 3 0 up just past the hour mark. And while we are here, we are going to make a substitution. Bakayo Sucker out there. Only going okay yet again on a 6.5. So Cavalier yet again can come off the bench for him. And we'll see if we can kick on against 10 men, 3 0 up. And 10 minutes off the back of that previous substitution, we are going to make another this time. Singo can come on for Tomoyasu, definitely so far player of the game, but he is down to a red heart. 15 minutes left, still 3 0 Arsenal. And shortly off the back of that most recent substitution, there is a highlight here. It's a throw in inside of the opposition half, and Pelé here squares that one for Sambi Lakonga, plays that one back to Bella Koch up. Now Singo down for Carvalho. Might look to square this for someone. Udegaard, great chance. It comes off the underside of the crossbar. Sanchez collects it. So we are still 3 0 up. And just inside the last 10 minutes of this game, a few absolutely useless highlights since that effort there from Udegaard, which did come off the underside of the crossbar, but a few players down to Red Hearts, or at least players. So Patino will come on for him. And we do still have one substitution we can use at this time as well. So we'll bring on Trincao for Martinelli as well. Those are all our subs used with eight minutes left. Still 3 0 Arsenal. And right on the brink of injury time in this one, still 3 0 up. A little bit disappointed we haven't kicked on a bit more since Gabriel did get that red car, but Singo puts that one over the bar, and I think that might just about do it. As you can see, very dominant display, but didn't quite kick on as much as I was hoping against the team men. But thankfully, off the back of that first half display, we did not need to superb work there from Takahiro Tomoyasu to assist as well as that goal, and we pick up yet another convincing win in the Premier League. So far, the only team to test us in that competition has been Newcastle United, and thankfully this time we keep our first clean sheet of the season as well. I think actually we kept one against Watford actually, so not quite true, but starting to string together a few clean sheets in the Premier League as well. 
which is quite nice this time. No defensive errors, which cost us a goal. That seemed to be our Achilles heel so far here at Arsenal. But certainly, looking quite lethal goal scoring wise, we pick up a 3 0 win. Aston Villa also pick up a win, and that means that we go back on top of the table above them thanks to goal differential. Meanwhile, at the other end, Mikel Arteta must be starting to get in a little bit of a dicey situation at our former club in Cardiff. Just one point from his first five games, plus a loss to Trabzon Spore in the Champions League. Might be time to go looking for a new replacement, Cardiff, but we don't mind about that too much because we are on top of the table at the completely different end of it, off the back of that 3-0 win over Brighton. And back in the inbox off the back of those two games, in today's episode, a frustrating loss there to Bayern Munich, especially when we could have got a draw with that late penalty to Coop Miners. Yeah, still not too sure what he was thinking there, but thankfully got back on track with a 3-0 win over Brighton. And meanwhile, still feeling a little bit guilty about the Cardiff situation. Mikel is really struggling there. We'll see how much longer he does last over in Wales. But that will do it for today's episode. A little bit of early catch-up work for us to do in the Champions League, but in a very good position in the Premier League after five games played. If you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and have been enjoying this series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. We'll come back at the start of next week. If you're new here, we don't do uploads over the UK weekend, so we'll come back on Monday next week, UK time, Tuesday, New Zealand time, and I think we're going to have to come back for that Juventus game, and before then, there's the small matter of a North London derby at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Already a bit annoyed at those guys. Of course, they pinched Emre Tezgill off us during the transfer window, so there's already a reason to hate Tottenham as if we needed one. And hopefully off the back of picking up a win there, because we should, we can get some points as well in the Champions League against Juventus. And it does look like some interesting games there in the month of October as well in the Premier League. So we might have to come back for those for the second episode of next week, but we'll start things off off the back of taking on Birmingham in the Carabao Cup, which the board do not care at all about, with Tottenham in the Premier League and Juventus in the Champions League. Hopefully, get back on track in that competition. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.